You're welcome back. This is The Pulse on Joy News here on Multi TV. With me, Benis Abu Bidu. Now, with just about 32 days to the elections, a lot of people have raised questions and some people have expressed some anxiety about how prepared the EC is for this year's elections, considering the fact that they're in court with a number of disqualified aspirants who are seeking that the court quash the decision by the Electoral Commission not to allow them contest this year's polls. Now, joining me is my colleague, Ernest Kotromenu. Now, he has details of a letter from a lawyer, Akuto Ampao, asking uh, the EC to do a number of things as regards uh, the date of election and obviously the anxiety surrounding uh, this whole whole year's election. So thank you so much for joining us, Ernest. So You're welcome, what exactly is he saying in the particular letter addressed to the EC? Okay, so he writes to the EC in his own words as a, as a citizen uh, who has so much anxiety about the elections and specifically with the date of the election, December 7. Already we had to move it from December, November 7 to December 7 because of what happened, transpired in Parliament. Now he is not sure if the EC uh, will hold the elections on November 7 because of the barrage of court cases the EC has to deal with. Today alone, there were about four cases in court, and the lead counsel, as you're told by our, our court correspondent, had to move from one court to the other. In fact, there are cases where they have not filed their uh, statements of their case of statements, and so they would have to postpone. I mean, the court would have to adjourn the case. So all of this culminates into the anxiety Akoto Ampa is expressing and wants to find out from the EC, even though the EC had told Ghanaians that it, it has uh, the, the commission chairperson, Charles say had assured Ghanaians over and over again that elections will be held on December 7th. He wants to be sure and has raised a number of issues. All right, does he make any suggestions? Uh um, the so EC. he doesn't make suggestions necessarily. He is asking questions, and there were seven questions he raises. Bernice, uh, the first one has to do with whether the EC has uh, estimated when all of these cases will come to an end, so it can take the next line of action or the next step when it comes to the balloting for the presidential. We know that that of the parliamentary has, has been done already, been done. but because of the number of cases we have the EC cannot go ahead with the presidential balloting. Mm -hmm. So that's his first concern. Then the second concern has to do with the printing of the ballot, uh, ballot papers. papers. Uh, the next issue also has to do with printing, but this time with a statement of poll, which we popularly refer to as the pink sheet. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is Akoto Ampao's third question. And when the EC estimates all of these will be done, already there are issues with the contract that has been awarded to uh, uh, vote, and we know today that a, a pressure group says the EC should uh, cancel the contract. But Madame Charlotte of Say, speaking to the BBC, has made it known that uh, the EC, the, the, the firm, is capable of doing the printing. He wants to know if, uh, when these things are going to be done, and that if they are done already, when? Because he's not sure as of now if the materials have been printed mm. or not. And or then the fifth point has to do with. Um, if these materials have been printed out, when in the judgment of the commission will they be printed out and be in the custody of the commission and to ensure that December elections, uh, the, seven run, the December 7 elections run smoothly. The set one says, will these election materials be printed in Ghana or abroad? Again, it has to do with the printing. And then finally, in the, when in the judgment of the commission will be the last date that it should have concluded the lawsuit uh, involved as a party and uh, should have printed all the materials involved. So basically, it's about the timing of mm. the election, mm. the date of the election, and when all of these will be cleared, and uh, he wants a reassurance from the electorate. All right, so that's what the letter is demanding, just the reassurance, exactly. not any suggestions or... Uh, no, not at all. He doesn't mm. make suggestions uh, to the electoral commission. He just wants the electoral commission, commission to reassure Ghanaians that indeed these and these steps are in the estimation of the EC, mm. the reasons why they believe that the elections would definitely come on on December 7th. We've had Madame Charlotte to say made that statement over and over again mm. just yesterday, even at the BBC. But Akoto Power still wants some more assurances. Sure. Uh, could mean that he's not satisfied yes. with those particular reasons. Thank you so much, Ernest, uh, for bringing us some excerpts from that letter written 
by lawyer Koto Ampao addressed to the EC and he's expressing concern about how prepared the EC is uh, with regards to election on December 7. Now EC chairperson Charlotte Say spoke on the BBC yesterday and explained that the various court cases will not derail the December 7 polls. We have started the process of printing the parliamentary ballots to make up um, you know, some of the time. And so we're in a good place to meet the, um, the, the, the December dates. In 2012, you know, after the 2012 presidential elections, we were in court in 2013. And one of the issues that came up for determination by the court was whether the absence of the signatures of presiding officers would invalidate the, re the results. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court dismissed that by majority decision. So that is the law. However, it does not mean that we are encouraging um, presiding officers not to sign results. Indeed, we have added it to the offenses in um, this year's um, constitutional instrument regulating the elections. And in the training we're having for the election officials, we're emphasizing not just the obligations, but the sanctions in the law. But when we get the results at the polling station level, um, we're going to have about 29,000 polling stations, less eight or so. Mm -hmm. Presiding officers have a duty to sign off the results, and party agents and candidate agents also have to sign the results. If they have any basis for challenging the results, they can ask for a recount at the polling station one recount. After that recount, if they still do not want to accept the results, then they have to there's a form they can fill to show why they do not want to sign the results. But if you have, let's say, 10 agents and one agent does not sign, it does not invalidate the results. We would, of course, have to check into the basis for the challenge and make sure that it is, um, it is an established, whether it is substantiated or not. And then we can go ahead with the final declarations. What we're doing this year in terms of the integrity of the coalition process is that, yes, we'll go through the presiding officer signs, they take it to the um, constituency collation center, there's 275 of them, where the results are collated. The candidates and the parties have counting agents there as well, where you can sign off the results after collation. And after the collation, it is also going to be electronically transmitted to the Electoral Commission. We're still working on finalizing that process. We would do a demonstration at IPAC, make sure everybody's satisfied with the transmission process. So what we are doing differently, learning from 2012. In 2012, we had one biometric verification machine at each polling station. This year, we're going to have two. Why? Is it because you had problems because in 2012? Because we had challenges with some of the machines. Which caused a delay or to the caused, end of voting. And in some places, voting had to be cancelled and done the following day. So now we're going to have two machines per polling station. So as backup? As backup. So there's a primary and there's a backup. So if any... But there was also, I think, a question about batteries for no, all the have, machines. No, we have batteries for all the machines because the batteries need to be changed every four hours. Mm. And then we're going to have about a 20% backup of the machines at the district level. So when... What does that mean, 20% backup? Depending on the number of police stations in the district, you're going to have a certain number of extra machines kept at the district so that if you are on your primary machine and it develops a problem and you switch to the number two machine we would deploy a number three there okay we also have four technicians in every district to support the process so that if there's any technical challenge the technicians come in and then at the national level we're going to have a, um, a an upstream with 20 technicians connected by phone to all the presiding officers so if there's any technical challenge they also come in and there's going to be an open line for the public as well so if anyone notices anything any challenges any issues any problems it may involve security intimidation we can call in the, the security personnel to come in that the electronic results are parallel the main results process is still the manual one, which we've always done within 48 to 72 hours of elections. Um, and we've always told them that if there's a discrepancy between what we see in the manual results and what we see in the electronic one, the manual one is going to prevail. Are you able to get a sense of 
how the poll has gone across the 29 polling stations. 20, just just 28,000. 29,000. 29,000 polling stations, just with the manual results that would have been faxed to you. Are you able to get that sense? Yes, you'll get it from the collated ones, but That's we right. need the backup, the, the, 20, the primary ones from the... And the reason I ask is, uh, so say, assuming the integrity of the, the, the result transmitted to you was tampered with, would you consider doing without it? Yes. Let's still stay on election-related news. Uh, our, my colleague, our man, who's been following uh, the case between the Electoral Commission and disqualified aspirants in the court, is here with me, Joseph Akable. Now, he's just returned from court, and there was something pretty interesting that happened in that particular case between the Electoral Commission and the NDP. Joseph, the, the, the judge says he will not recuse himself. Tell us what led to his decision eventually. Uh, well, first and foremost, what we must understand is that the NDP uh, filed a case at the High Court in that one presided over by Justice George Kumsin. Mm. Now, that suit was dismissed. They filed another case, and this time around, it was sent to the Commercial Court 7, where uh, Justice Che Balfour is the judge who hears the matter. Now, when we went to court today, uh, the ECC lawyer Thaddeus sorry, pointed out that he wants that he wants the judge to recuse himself. And he had made uh, that uh, proposal earlier, earlier than today. Yes, yes. So today he was just reminding him that, my lord, I don't There's want you on this case. before you and I want you off the case. Mm. And his reason for asking that is the fact that he says this judge is the same judge who ruled in favor of Dr. Pakwesindum. He says the two matters are very similar and the judge has made up his mind in one case. So it's likely to affect his decision in this particular matter. And in fact, he says, another college judge, my lawyer, Rollins's lawyer, has in several parts of his statements to the court quoted aspects of that particular ruling, which is again before the court. So you can't trust the judge to have that clear mind in order not to be biased towards their case. But the judge disagreed. In fact, another uh, Kunejad Marolins' lawyer, Asa Nkuma, also disagreed. He says that the fact that a case has gone to a, a judge and another case that is similar comes before the same judge doesn't mean the judge cannot hear the matter. Mm. He's of the view that the judge answered a question of law, and this is another matter of law that has been put before him, and the judge has the competence to do that. Uh, the judge is staying. In on. other words, he should, tr he should trust the judge to do a good job uh, with, with the different cases. Uh, so... In the end, what happened? We know that the judge says he will not recuse himself. Yes, he, uh, What was the reaction of Thaddeus, sorry, to that? He, he can't say much. I mean, like, uh, when a, a ruling on uh, such a, an issue comes up and it's given, you can only pass your brief comments. And the point he made was that, I mean, he respects the decision of the court. But then again, the judge in his ruling mentioned, stated emphatically that he can change his mind if he wants to. And one thing that you need to understand is that as a judge, he's doing a work for God and country. And he takes decisions that benefits not just himself, but the country as a whole. And he again made a point that it's only mad men who don't change their minds. So they should trust him to do due diligence and give a very good uh, ruling. So he's staying on. And clearly, Issa Nkoma was very happy. In fact, the judge had wanted to even fix a date to rule on a substantive suit. But then again, Isila Tadio sorry, had some concerns. Uh, he says, uh, per the rules, the judge, after giving such a ruling, needs to give a bit of more time. And then again, they have some issues they would like to point out. So the mm. judge says, let's come back Monday, 12 noon, because you have a case in the morning at the Supreme Court. Come back 12 noon, and let's continue. Mm. Uh, and so it means that, when are, what is that going to be an oral presentation of their cases on that, Monday? That will not be allowed. But what will happen is that on Monday, when they come, he's going to allow them that leeway maybe you have some issues that you like to point out. Uh, he's saying specifically that maybe there are some things that you feel you may not have been able to explain mm. clearly in your written statement, or for which reason you would like to have an opportunity to speak more about it. I will give you the opportunity to do that. Well, let's talk about the other cases in court. And uh, we know the APC uh, were victorious in that particular case we've heard from uh, Hassan Yarga, who is a flag bearer of uh, the APC. And uh, what about the other cases? What's the, 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 the plan now? At what status are they now? Uh, for that of the PNC, uh, that will also be determined on uh, November 10. Now, today was the day for oral arguments. So uh, Dr. Edward Mohamed's lawyer, uh, Dr. Raymond Atuguba, presented his side of the story on behalf of his client. And this point is a very simple one. The interesting bit about this whole court uh, dispute is that all the matters appear to be very much related. The point is the same point that Hassan Arega drummed home. He's saying that his client was not given an opportunity by the Electoral Commission to correct the mistake on his nomination form, for which reason the commission decided to reject the form. He says CI-94 is very clear. It says when I present the form to you, 
you and identify a mistake and let me and give me an opportunity. If I fail to correct that mistake, you can decide to reject my form. So those were his arguments. But the EC lawyer still maintains that, I mean, they cannot allow everyone an opportunity to correct their mistakes. Else it will mean that we'll never be able to conduct elections. And we are running out of time. So if you come to then identify a mistake, and tomorrow I identify another mistake, I should give you I another keep chance. giving you the chance. Exactly. Uh, did you go to the Supreme Court today? Yes, and that was uh, that of Dr. Pakwe Sindhu versus the Electoral Commission again. And this is the second uh, attempt by the EC to quash the decision from the high court today when we went to court it was very brief proceedings the justice have just directed that the lawyers on both sides in fact they give a directive that by yesterday they should have submitted their written statement of case none of them was able to fulfill that so the direction that they should do so by the close of today and come back uh, to the courtroom on monday uh, for the uh, oral arguments as it were for judgment that is on monday november 7 rather because as it stands the written statements are before the court and the justice are saying they are going to rely on the written statements to rule on the matter so on monday november 7 the supreme court will be ruling on that matter uh, mm -hmm. brought to it challenging the decision from the high court right now all these cases uh, the ec has been represented uh, by Fadio, sorry, w what did he look like, his demeanor and all that? We just want to have a, a mental <laughs> picture. I mean, from one court to the other, yeah, what was yeah. the what And, and, and there are, are instances, in fact, that of the APC, when the judgment was delivered this morning, he wasn't in court. He sent a colleague lawyer to go and mention that he had been sent to represent him so that he receives the judgment on his behalf. So he missed that one. Mm. But more often than not, you find him running all the way to another court because he's often in the company of just another a gentleman, Sean Poku. Uh, but today they had some two ladies join their team. He's very calm. But each time, when there's anything that requires time, he often reminds the court that you are not in my situation. So today, for instance, when Asa Nkuma wanted the judge to go ahead and decide and fix a date for the ruling, he mentioned that you don't have the number of cases that I have. So you should understand me when I say I need more time. Mm. Thank you for those updates, Joseph Akable. That uh, man on the beat uh, as regards the cases between the EC and the disqualified presidential aspirants in this year's polls. You are watching The Pulse with me, Benis Abubed. When we come back, we're going to have an interesting discussion. And it's on infidelity. You wouldn't want to miss it. Please stay with us.